All right, I think we're live. Just to briefly start us off, you may be wondering, what in the world am I doing in a vehicle? Well, I'm actually in my truck. I just got off of my work, uh, so I was working late today, and a couple of us were working late at the office, and so uh, before I got back to my destination where I'm currently staying at, uh, I didn't, I realized I didn't have enough time. So I pulled over somewhere in a quiet spot and I'm here in my truck, but that's not going to hinder me from still pursuing this lesson. Uh, as we're discussing the topic of modesty, uh, this evening is part of our series on moral issues here on what say the scripture. So I want to throw that, um, disclaimer out there real fast. So you may probably notice a vehicle or two drive by. So, uh, I do apologize, but, uh, you know, Sometimes you got to make do. But whenever it comes to the Word of God, there's never a bad time or a bad location. The Word of God is always there. It's always accessible. Let the Word of Christ dwell within you richly. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 16. And to study shall thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15. Serena says, hello. Oh, it's good to see you guys again. And I hope that you guys are ready. Because we're basically going to go over a little bit of review of what we talked about last week, last Thursday night, about modesty. And then we're going to expound upon some different aspects of it. Because we've got a lot of feedback from the lesson from last week. So I wanted to uh, clarify some things that maybe uh, we had studied last week. Or maybe I had talked to some of you in a private messenger about it. A lot of you were very impacted by it. And not impacted in a way to make me sound... Uh, to brag or anything, but the word of God really does prick the heart. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 37. And so when we actually study the word of God in depth and we actually look at it in a practical sense, it's really interesting to see that there's a lot of things that we ourselves, even as members of the church, for those of us who are members of the church of Christ, the Lord's church, Acts chapter 2 verse number 47, it's interesting to know and to feel that we've got some work to do in our theology. We've got some work to do in our uh, belief system. And if our beliefs are not lined up with Scripture, again, Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 17, you know, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the authority, in the name of or by the authority of Jesus the Christ, who is in subjection to the Father, uh, God the Father. And so we really want to emphasize here on what say the Scripture, that we go to the Bible for Bible questions, and we go to the Bible to find Bible answers. It's, it's important because we live in a society today that really just emphasizes how you feel. It, it, it prioritizes what you think and how you've been raised, even if it's not in line with what God is actually telling us through his divinely inspired text. So we're going to kind of go over a little bit of a review from last week, from last Thursday. So if you guys are joining us, uh, welcome. Uh, if you got any comments, uh, please comment down below. Any questions, any thoughts, any disagreements with me, maybe with what I said or maybe with what I've read from Scripture, please feel free to comment down below. I, I want this to be interactive. I want you guys to engage with us. Uh, hopefully, at some point, Nemo will be able to join us, but I'm not sure. Uh, I know he's been busy with certain other uh, other things, but um, I know that he's also had some interest. Uh, Nemo, if you guys don't know, it's uh, short for Nehemiah, but... We call him Nemo here on what say the scripture, but Nemo is our uh, technical producer. So uh, he and I are trying to figure out and plan out the future of the broadcast as well. But uh, for right now, um, it's just going to be me. We're going to keep going through our uh, study on, uh, you know, moral issues. The overall series is called What's the Issue Here? A What Say the Scripture series on moral issues. And so modesty is is classified. Modesty is basically, in, in a physical way, is how we present ourselves through our clothing and what we wear in our bodies. And so modesty is considered a moral issue, just like social drinking and drinking. I always leave with social drinking, but alcohol and drinking, uh, including social drinking, uh, dancing, uh, drugs, all these different things, uh, issues of morality such as, you know, murder or, or lying and all of these things, right? that we study in scripture and have probably heard many lessons about, or maybe in, in passing by, we've heard comments made by preachers about these specific things. But tonight's topic is going to be a part two on modesty, on our clothing. And on, obviously, uh, through scripture, we're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse number 9. That's going to be our jumping point again. 
1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9, this issue of modesty, not that it does not pertain to men, but it is very apparent that Paul makes a statement here, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse number 9. If you have your Bibles, I've got my Bible, as always. I'm reading from the King James Version. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 9, if you have your Bibles open, have your notes out, follow along with me here. The Bible says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shame facedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly arrays. So we went over the idea of modest apparel. And modest apparel basically has been categorized or defined as, as we looked in Genesis chapter 3, going all the way back to the beginning, we looked in Exodus chapter 28, that the garb or the garments that the priests were to wear, right, and, and the worship to the Lord, the Israelite worship, that was for a specific time and a specific place, right, a specific time frame and a specific people, but yet that pattern of, of the garments that the priests were to wear did have a pattern. God outlined that in Exodus chapter 28, verses 40 through 42, and that it was from the shoulder to the knee. The garment they were the priests were to cover their thighs and down to the knee. And then we see again in Isaiah chapter 47, verses 1 through 3, a little bit of review. And again, I can repeat these verses if you need me to, and I can also send a list out to you if you'd like to have a lot of these verses. I have uh, I have a little page of notes here. It's a lot of chicken scratch. But basically the idea of in Isaiah chapter 47, verses 1 through 3, the daughter of the Chaldeans being categorized right when they were put into slavery, been put to uh, grind the millstone and all of these different um things that the slave women would do what's interesting is that we find through the ideas the principles of genesis 3 the principles in exodus 28 and then we see the principles again in isaiah chapter 47 that there were to, there was to be a covering from shoulder to knee even the exposure of the thighs was considered naked and you may be thinking christian well naked means you're completely nude like i said last week there are two different definitions or two different categories of naked, right? We have naked in a sense of nudity, right? Full nudity. And then there's what's called relative nakedness. Isn't it interesting in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 7 and all, all the way leading up to Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 21 that both Adam and Eve were in transgression of being naked in a relative sense? That the fig aprons that they were that were sewn together by them were considered in, insufficient. And then we see in Isaiah chapter 47 that a woman was considered naked, right, with the uncovering, the bearing of the leg and the uncovering of the thigh. And that was the nakedness that was exposed, Isaiah chapter 47 and verse number 3. And then how Isaiah the prophet, through divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit himself, Isaiah chapter 47 and verse number uh, 3 and 4 goes to the idea that the man was not to associate with the woman because she was considered naked in a relative sense. So we've understood, and I, I've gone over this many times with people, and, and it's surprising because even in the church, there's a, hard, there's a hard concept to grasp that I'm considered naked even if I'm exposing my thigh. That could be the case. And through my initial study of just these Old Testament passages alone, and then the idea and the principles found in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, right? If we are to profess godliness, we are to be covered. We are not to be exposing our bodies to the world in such a provocative manner, but we are to be appropriately covered. That way we are to be, uh, profess godliness, right, uh, with good works, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 10. Uh, preacher man Sean Wooden says, I just have a question. If a man wears a t-shirt with the sleeves cut off, is this inappropriate for him to wear? Um you know that's a very specific. Uh, that's a very specific part uh, article of clothing. That's a good question. Uh, are you talking about like a sleeveless shirt? Uh, I've actually got sleeveless shirts. I know that many men like to even in the church sometimes when they mow their lawns or maybe when they go work out or play sports. I know a lot of men like to wear the cut off, uh, the sleeveless shirts. Um, I would have to say that the idea is that the as long as the body is covered, the arms. When we talk, when we talk about shoulder to knee. You know, many of us in the in the summer wear short sleeve shirts. The idea is that we want to make sure that we are not exposing any part. So if I were to wear a shirt that did cut off, like right here, I'm talking about some men do that. You know, they, they call them crop tops. And I know that a lot of women like to wear that. But 
But in the same sense, right, men have also wear, worn uh, shirts that cut off to here or maybe shirts that cut off at the shoulders. So, uh, again, you know, this really is a, a, a term of discretion as well. I'm not going to tell you, no, you can't wear them, or yes, you can wear them. I, I'm not going to say that. That's not my uh that's not my place to say that. Uh, like you said, uh, preacher man, none of us authority, the Bible and Jesus has all authority. So we should be obedient to what the Bible says. And yes, a sleeveless shirt. Okay. So that, that's, that's not the point, you know, because I see a lot of men who wear like sleeveless shirts, but they also wear appropriate covering. So I would say those would be okay. Um, you know, those wouldn't be considered immodest, but if men were to wear short shorts and a lot of men do, whether they go running or whether they go uh, do activities or whatever the case may be, it still is categorized, even for men as well, not just the ladies, but for the guys as well. If we are exposing parts of our bodies that is not in line or within the biblical pattern, again, that is immodest. We talked about this last week, right? There's no such thing as more modest or more immodest. There's just modest and immodest. So you can put two and two together. If you are not modest, then you are immodest. So we have to make sure that we are modest. We are appropriately clothed. Uh, I've also had questions uh, pertaining to, you know, the privacy of the home. And what do I mean by that? Well, I've had a couple sisters message me and say, well, what about, okay, I, I, I do have immodest clothing, but could I wear that at home? Okay, so what, 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 what do you mean by that? They're like, well, could I wear that, like, you know, if I'm by myself or, or if I'm, you know, not in public, uh, could I wear maybe shorter shorts or maybe pajama shorts that are not covering the thigh completely and all these things? Well, really what we're trying to focus on here is how we dress out in public. Now, I'm not going to tell you to, to, to bathe or to shower fully clothed. I mean, that would sound silly. I mean, that's not the, that the whole point of a shower or, a, or to bathe is to cleanse our, you know, to cleanse our bodies and we have to remove our clothes for that. In the privacy of our own home, and I just say, you know, we, probably a lot of us don't would not sleep in full clothing, right? There'd be some sort of clothing, maybe more comfortable for sleepwear. But again, you know, I'm not the ultimate judge of that. I'm not. I'm not a fashionista, or I'm not a. I'm not a stylish person. <laughs> My fiance could tell you that. I think she's watching, but I'm not a stylish person. But at the same time, again, the biblical precedent, the biblical principle, God's word does not change or alter or 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 modify itself to fit a specific situation in this case in public display of ourselves through our clothing we are to be honoring god and our with our bodies first corinthians chapter 6 uh, verse number 19 and romans chapter 12 in verse number one so in the privacy of our own home i would have to say you know i don't think there's really much of an issue i mean if you're with your spouse if you are married you're with your spouse i mean you know your bodies are your bodies, and we're going to get to that principle here in a second. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But but the privacy of our own home issue, uh, I would have to say, overall, I would just abstain from all forms of immodest clothing. But I, I know a lot of women like to wear leggings. That's that's real a big trend nowadays, and leggings and yoga pants and, and all of these different things. And so... Uh, that that can be dangerous. That can lead to lust. Matthew five twenty eight. That can be associated with um, with promiscuous attire. Proverbs chapter seven verse number ten. So we we want to make sure. And I'm not trying to call any women here prostitutes. That's not what I'm saying. But we have to make sure that we are not falling into that category. Men as well. We have to make sure that we are not falling into that category of wearing immodest clothing. So the privacy of our own home. I know some women are, are, are getting a little bit, they're like, oh no, I can't wear this, I can't wear this. I'm not going to tell you what to wear. That's not my place to say. I can only teach you what the Bible says on this specific topic. Now you're going to have to use divine discretion through God's word, going back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15, to decide if what you are wearing is modest. In the privacy of your own home, you know, Brent and I... Uh, you know, Brent, my, my host, my co-host here on What Say the Scripture, we've, we, we, we've discussed it a little bit, and is it necessarily just wrong, and, and we're going to look down on you if a woman wears leggings around the, the privacy of her own home? I mean, no, in, in all retrospect, probably not, 
But again, when we are out in public, when we are around people, even around family uh, in different areas, I mean, we, we need to make sure that we are just appropriately clothed and not showing off our bodies in a promiscuous sense. Because even leggings, ladies, is going to hurt a little bit if you like leggings. They can lead to promiscuous thoughts and, and ideas and ways if worn out in public. Because we live in a society today that is very sexualized. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know how sex used to be more sacred back in the older times. And, and sex was something that was shared between a man and, and his wife for the most part. I'm not saying that people did not fornicate. Of course they did. If we go read Matthew 19. They did that in the first century. They did that all the way back in the Old Testament. But what I'm trying to say is, is that through uh, society, especially American culture, marriage was found to be more sacred between a husband and his wife. Nowadays, they're telling you, hey, it's going to sound kind of bad here, but sex it up. Of course, we don't teach that. That's not what the Bible teaches. But you, you can have fun with somebody else in, in, in different uh, pleasurable ways outside the confines of marriage. And, and, and all of that, a lot of that does stem from how we dress. And women, how you dress. Men, how we dress. It does play a big part. And it can be sinful. And it can lead someone to stumble, Romans 14, and can lead us in a path directed towards hell after the judgment. We do not want to fall into that. So if you have your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I want to look at this principle here because I've also heard, uh, I'll say this, I've heard arguments, right? Women get very dicey on this subject. Let's just say a woman is married to a man, okay? Bibl you know, Scripturally, they're married. And... Sometimes a husband, or even sometimes vice versa, maybe a wife is concerned with, with, with what her husband wears, and it, it can go both ways. So I'm not trying to pick on the ladies here, but let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm, I'm going to bring up this idea here. Some women get I, upset with the idea that their husband kind of controls what they wear. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, sometimes a man may say, hey, you know, honey, that outfit that you were wearing... Is revealing, it's exposing uh, some parts of your body, maybe exposing your leg, bearing your leg, and all different things. And I, I, I just think that you need to wear something that is, you know, modest. This is what this is what men say to their wives, or maybe the wife maybe say her to her man. It can go both ways, like I said. So this is not trying to pick on one gender or one spouse or the other. This is not what I'm trying to get at. But I've heard before that women do get upset by this idea that they say, well, that someone can't tell me what I want to wear. They can't tell me what to wear. I can wear what I want. Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I want to read uh, a few passages out of here. If you have your Bibles, I want you to annotate, take notes, circle, highlight, everything. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting in verse number 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Okay, so men... This is going back to the principle found in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 28, that a man is not to lust after a woman. If he even lusts after a woman, visually speaking, he's already committed adultery with her in his heart. So we want to avoid that. So even touching, and men, it can be hard. It can be hard, and women as well. It can be very hard not to fall into that temptation, right, and want to maybe engage in some physical activity or, or, or whatnot. So we really do have to discern and, 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 and really go to God's word and reflect, meditate, pray, Psalm chapter 119, and really reflect on what, how we are you know, interacting with maybe a, a loved one in the sense of a relationship, right? if we are in a romantic relationship or even marriage. But in this context, we are talking about marriage here, okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let's continue on in verse number 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Pretty straightforward. In verse number 3, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Okay, this is interesting. I want you to follow along with me here. Verse number 4, the wife hath not power over her own of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Okay, I want to stop there. So what's Paul talking about? Well, in, in more of an intimate sense, right? That the wife's body and the husband's body, they are reserved for one another. Okay? 
And this is more of an intimate, intimate sexual context. But let's take this into modesty. How does this have anything to do with modesty? Okay. Well, if we are to profess godliness, you know, you know profess godliness, 1 Timothy, Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 10, and we are to profess ourselves in such a way that we are um, zealous of good works, right? We are a peculiar people that stand out for Christ, Titus chapter 2 and verse number 14, then what what does it really say about us, right? Let's just say I'm married to my fiance, uh, Elizabeth, and she was maybe wearing, and she doesn't, but maybe she started wearing some promiscuous clothing or maybe some clothing that was revealing of certain parts of her body. Wouldn't Paul, through implication, be telling me that I do have a say in what she wears and, and how her body is presented to the public? And wouldn't Elizabeth have that same um, jurisdiction over my body as well? It goes both ways, right? It's not just the man trying to look out for his wife and her body, but the wife for the husband as well. So and this is something that's very hard and difficult to talk to about the, you know, with the opposite gender, but this has to be discussed. This has to be preached. This has to be taught because it's extremely important and it can cost us our souls if we are not careful. So what? I, so basically what I want to say is this, is that men, you do have a say in what your wife wears. Women, wives, you have a say in what your husband wears. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at that. If your husband's not wearing something modest and not pleasing to the Lord through the biblical principle that we've been studying, the principles that we've been studying, then he's got to change. And men, we've got to be cracking down and making sure our wives are professing godliness through their clothing. Women, sometimes, I, I've heard women, this is on the women's side, I, I've heard some just hate this idea. They say, well, I want to wear what I want to wear, and he can't do anything about it. Well, Paul's saying, in this context, even though it's an intimate sense, why would the husband want his wife to be exposing parts of her body that are reserved for him? When they come together and have you know a, a passionate love for one another, I don't mean to get graphic, I don't mean to get awkward, but we have to address these points. That if we are to adhere to modest principles, the husband needs to, first off, be a great leader of the home. He needs to be working, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse number 10. He needs to be a, 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 a good husband, obviously, Ephesians chapter 5. And so if he's going to be a good husband, a good Christian husband, I should say a great Christian husband, someone who is strong in the faith, then he is going to say, honey, look, I love you, and so I care about you, but what you are wearing, according to what the scripture is teaching us, that is not in line with what you are wearing currently. It's not in line with how things are going. The wife, the same way. She can say, honey, you know, you need to be wearing shirts and, and, and wearing longer shorts if you're going to mow the lawn or, or go play sports or do something. This is very important. You may disagree with me on this, and that's that's okay. You know, I'm not telling you what to think, but we've really got to understand through the principles of Scripture, if we are going to live in a way that is pleasing to Him, we, we're not going to seek to please men. We're going to seek to please God, Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 10. We've got to make sure that we are dressing in a way, both men and women, we are dressing in a way that is pleasing, uplifting, edifying, and does not cause anyone to stumble. Okay? We've got to understand this. We've got to understand this. Because what would Job say in Job chapter 31 and verse number 1? They, that I, I made a covenant with thine eyes, not to lust or not to, not to wander and to look. And women, even wives, just think about this. I mean, it, it, would, it would just kill me if I'm if I'm married to my fiance one day and she's wearing something uh, that is revealing and she's causing other men to stumble now obviously I, I I know she won't do that we've been studying this and um, every every couple should be studying this this is just as important and same with me I want to make sure that I'm not causing someone to stumble but this is important to understand that if we are preaching within the church to be lied unto the world uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 to let a light shine 
to spread the gospel, to do all this. Well, it does matter how we present ourselves. We can present ourselves in, in such a demeaning manner. And, and, and women, specifically women, I want to ask you, do you cherish your body? Do you cherish your body? Do you cherish what God has created? You know, women have a lot of self-confidence and self-esteem issues because society is so pressuring and so persistent on trying to tear down uh, different body types and how you look. But women, I'm going to tell you this right now, that your, your body is a holy temple, right? First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. And God has specifically and divinely designed you to be you. Now, you know, like I said, you know, in the privacy of your own home, maybe with your spouse, uh, I can't tell you what exactly to wear or what not. That's not the issue here. But when you are out in public, whether you're at, at, at a, uh, a place like, um, you know, water themed or a sporting event, whatever the case may be, because Christians are everywhere, right? We're going to be places. We shouldn't be at bet. We shouldn't be at places that are not pleasing to him, but we are going to be at places around a lot of people all the time. We need to be presenting our bodies in such a way that we both honor them and respect them. You know, they try to tell you in society that a, a woman's clothing, if, she, if she's more clothed, if she has more clothes on, she doesn't like her body. That's completely false. That's completely false. I want to debunk that right now. That's just a bunch of silly garbage, okay? A woman who professes godliness, boy, she has respect for her body. She is a strong woman and she's going to make sure that she is appropriately covered in a modest in modest apparel because she not only honors herself and loves herself and loves her body and I don't mean in a prideful sense but in a in a respectful sense but she also respects God she respects his creation so that's what we should be focusing on and men as well we've got to be focusing on not trying to portray ourselves or expose ourselves in such a manner that's going to give us such a, a bad image. And, and, and why, if we're going to pretend to be Christians, and this is also a big issue within the church, within the church, and I've said this last week, if we are going to portray ourselves as strong Christians, then we're going to reserve what is, what is reserved for whom it is reserved for. That's why God honors marriage so highly, Malachi chapter 2. God hates divorce, Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. Marriage is so honorable, it's great. I mean, marriage is honorable, Hebrews 13, and verse number 4. Marriage is honorable, and the bed is undefiled, but adulterers and whoremongers, God will judge. So we've got to make sure we are presenting our bodies in such a manner that is pleasing to Him, and we are not conforming to society. I posted a list uh, for uh, some stores, and I'm going to get to that list in a second because I have, I've had some questions on uh, some of the suggestions and, and some of the options that they sell. Uh, but first, preacher man Sean Wooden says, a, man or ma a woman or man does not need to dress immodestly or inappropriate to gain respect or attention. That is absolutely correct. Amen, brother. Uh, we need to make sure that we are presenting ourselves in, in, in a way that people know that we're different and i don't mean we're talking about being weird okay <laughs> you know brent and i've talked about we don't we, we don't want to be weird but we are different we stand out and people notice and people will give attention to what stands out we stand out in a good way we are peculiar people zealous of good works titus chapter 2 and verse number 14 so this list that i had posted a couple days ago on uh, what say the scripture Instagram page and the Facebook page? A lot of you uh, had some great feedback. And actually, all of those stores that were mentioned, I, I I did not know about most of them. I think I heard about maybe one or two, but most of them were submitted to me. And so I did have some uh, some responses back from individuals and, and mainly women that were like, okay, well they sell some modest options, but then there's also immodest apparel that these places sell. So I'm going to say this right now. Uh, I know a good chunk of those places. I'll have to get back with the people that sent those uh, references to me. And again, all the people that sent those references to me are strong members of the church. So uh, I took their word for it. Um, and yes, I did I did some research as well. I didn't just blatantly post. I did some research on these places, uh, looked at their options, looked at their uh, what they were selling. And, and there are some there are some things that they sell that are not modest, that they think is modest, but really is not. 
So again, I'm going to answer this question, you know, what do we do with a place or a store that says they sell Mazda apparel and they don't? Or maybe they sell some and, they, and most of the time they don't. Whatever the case may be, you, it's your responsibility as a Christian, it's my responsibility as a Christian to use good judgment, to use good discretion on what to buy and pertains to clothing. I cannot tell you again what to buy. I can't tell you what to wear. I can only give you the principles. I can only give you teaching. We can only look at the Word of God together to see what is appropriate and what is not. I cannot vouch for some of these stores. And not every store on that list was owned by uh, members of the church. Some of them were owned maybe by another religious affiliation, but we don't, we're don't. we not trying to promote them in a religious way. We're just trying to say, hey, if you were having trouble finding, uh, especially for the women, trying uh trying to find modest apparel that is also makes you feel makes you look good and feel good but it's also modest and uh in accordance with god's teaching and, and biblical principle on modesty then we have presented some stores to you or i have presented some stores to you in a list that you may go check out yourself if you don't like those stores you don't ever you don't ever i'm not gonna force you to order anything from them I'm just trying to help you out because I've had many uh, individuals, especially young women, uh, approach me and say, "I, I love. I want to be a little bit, you know, trendy and fashionable, you know, but at the same time, I want to be modest. And I think mod- the modesty principle comes first before the trendy or the fashionable. But it's very hard for women. I understand that, and, I, and I'm a guy. I'm a man. I don't know what you women are going through with the fashion, and and and, and my fiance's told me it's hard. Uh, it's harder to find uh, things to wear that are modest and also, um, also, you know, cute as they call it. So, um, <laughs> I don't really say the word cute, but I will in this sense, just to be fair to the women. But um, preacher man Sean Wooden says Walmart sells both modest and immodest clothing. At least the one around here where I live, North Carolina, does. Yes. Yeah, so, again, any. I was talking to some people, any big clothing outlet store will have modest options. They will have a lot of immodest options too. Just avoid those. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses number 22 and 23, just avoid, abstain from all forms of immodesty in that sense. But you will find, I I guarantee you, right? Matthew chapter seven and verse number seven and eight, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. If you seek and you truly pray and meditate and say, Lord, help me find modest apparel that you have uh, defined for me in your word, I pray, I pray for you as well. And I know for a fact God in his providence will lead you to find options that are both um, modest, according to his word, and also that will make you feel good and look good. So that way you don't have to uh, feel bad about how you look. Because we all, we want, it's not wrong to want to feel and look good. It's not wrong. That's not that's not what we're trying to teach you. We're not trying to tell you, hey, you've got to wear an ankle length dress all the time, every day. That's not what we're saying. But in terms of the biblical principle, shoulder to knee, uh, I don't care what brand it is. I've, I've, ta- I've told my fiance, I don't care what brand it is. I don't care uh, what pattern it is, as long as it's not a, you know, a weird, <laughs> like a promiscuous pattern or anything. But I don't care the material, whatever, as long as it's not a a provocative, uh, exposing, outlining certain parts. As long as it's, neither of those things, as long as it's modest, I don't care. <laughs> I'm a guy. I, I don't have a preference on what the woman wears. As long as it's immodest, or <laughs> as long as it is modest. I said modest. I might have sounded said immodest, but as long as it is modest, according to God's word. So. I kind of hope that clarifies. Maybe some of you may be uh, joining kind of late. Um, Megan says, I'm so sorry I'm late. I've been very sick. I can say that I've been able to find clothes on Amazon. That's mod. very affordable. If anyone needs any rec- recommendations, I try to help. Yes, Sister Megan is awesome. She's been on the ball. Uh, we've been talking a little bit. And so, um, like I said, big clothing stores, uh, on- uh, online outlets, there's going to be options for you to find, I, I guarantee you. Uh especially the ladies, there's going to be options. You've just got to go search for it. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a little bit pricey too. I think some of the options my fiance found, she said they're a little bit more expensive, but to me, it's worth it. To me, it's worth it. Um, 
to, to follow God, to honor God in a pleasing manner is 100% worth it to me. Um, okay, I'm going to see what we got here. Um, go to 1 Peter chapter 4. Actually, go to 1 Peter chapter 3 first. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to talk about another aspect or two of modesty, and then we will uh, wrap it up on this lesson. But I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 3. So we were talking earlier, 1 Peter, cha uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, right? We're talking about marriage because this is a this is, does pertain to marriage in a way that modesty does or a relationship between a man and a woman in a romantic sense. Ma mostly marriage, right? Mostly marriage. Sorry, I was receiving a call. I hope it didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't pause uh, too much. But, okay, let's read 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to go through 1. 1 Peter chapter 3, if you have your Bibles open. We're going to read 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great Christ. For after this manner, in verse number five, the old time, the holy women also who trust in God adorn themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. So there's a principle here about modesty. There is. This is really pertaining to marriage as Peter's writing as an elder. But think about modesty here. Modesty is not just is not just the idea of covering oneself in a pleasing manner. It's also not expressing yourself or flashing yourself to the public. Is it wrong to wear earrings? No. Is it wrong to have your hair done? No. But see, sometimes, here, here's a problem though. A lot of people say, oh, well, I hear it's not wrong to do that, so let me just explode it out. What does that mean? Well, they just want to just uh, go all out. The most expensive earrings, the most expensive hairdo, the most expensive clothing, they go all out. And this is more of an issue with women. This can be with men, but with women as well. There is a, there, there, there's a problem here, even within the church. Peter faced it. Uh, Paul had faced it when he traveled through all the different congregations of the first century. It's, it's interesting to see that there were women, even within church, that were trying to flash and show themselves. And this was not in unison with what Peter would write. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be hidden, man of the heart, that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So we're to be meek. We're to be chaste. We're to be humble, right? God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4 and verse number 6. Women, you know, I, I'm going to say this. The flashy and the showy and, and, and getting the hair done all the time and the nails done all the time and all these flashy things, it's not going to add up at all. And it's in exact contrast with the Christian conduct that is found in 1 Peter chapter 3. It's in direct contrast with what Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Is it wrong to wear makeup? No. Is it wrong to wear earrings? No. But sometimes when people hear that, they say, oh, it's not wrong. What they do, they explode it out. They just go for it. Folks, we've got to be careful that men as well, they, they, they find these thousands upon thousand dollar suits. They wear these nice clothing, all these brands. I, you know, my fiance's had to teach me about all these clothing brands that are designer and all these things. And, and I'm, I'm just going to say this right now, that too much of that is a sin. Yes. It's not wrong to own nice clothing. But man, I'm going to tell you this. The, the flashy and the showy, and, and I mean, there are women that get their hair done almost every day. I mean, th that gets to a point where you're not following the principles at all. We're just going to have to shut that down. How are you going to be a light unto the world? When we talk about being a light unto the world, and we talk about being out in public, we talk about how we dress modestly, right? But also how we present ourselves. If we're presenting ourselves in such a way where we're wearing such expensive clothing all the time and just doing all these things, then people are not going to get the message. 
They're going to look at us just as the world sees everyone else. We're not going to be different. We're not going to be peculiar. In fact, the the woman, the wife, who is not, who, who is a meek and quiet spirit, who, who praises the Lord even through how she, shouldn't say praise, not, not worship in a sense, but honors God through how she presents herself. She's the one that's going to make a difference. Not not the flashy, not the showy. Oh, look at me. I drive the you know, not really nice, expensive car. I, I do all these things. It's so, I mean, to me even, when I study the scriptures, when I study the New Testament, man, it just, it just blows my mind. How intense and how how sincere some people are about how they look and how they present themselves. They will spend more hours upon hours in a day trying to get the best and expensive clothing and the best expensive car and worry about all these things. And these are members of the church rather than getting into the word of God to set our affections on things above and not the things of earth. Colossians chapter three and verse number two. Folks, we got to get better about this. I, myself included. We can fall into a temptation, right? But a temptation that's not going to overcome us, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13, if we stay grounded, if we stay level and have our foundation in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and verse number 11. So we dress in a modest manner and we do not overdo it. We don't go all flashy and showy. You know what? It's interesting. Uh, some of the clothing uh, stores and, and some of the uh, apparel options that you can buy, I'll say this, I'll say this, you know, I don't have to have the most expensive. Sure, I have some nice clothes, I'm not going to say I don't, but I don't have to have the most expensive. Some people say, well, there's a $30 option, but I want the $3,000 option. Members of the church have said this, they have said this, and you basically, you buy the same product, but they want the one that's name brand. Oh, they want the one that's... 20 times as much as the other option at the more basic option both serve the same function both actually probably look the same but because this one's a specific brand they want to buy that brand because hey guess what the world says to buy this brand so it's i mean and it's not just women it's, just, it's men as well and i'm just you know i'm sometimes it's appalling to me it's not a personal attack against anybody, not specific women or men, but it, it just is it, it's appalling to me because members of the church are falling into this. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've been missing some of the comments here. Uh, Megan says, absolute sister, I cannot go out shopping due to illness and mass cell activation syndrome. However, Amazon allows you to buy clothing and try it on at home. If it doesn't fit or work, you can return it for free. In most instances, it helps so much. That's correct. I know Amazon does that. Uh, other places probably do as well. Maybe Amazon's the only one. I don't know, but you all know that more than I do. Uh, Preacher Man says, April Gordon, that goes for men too. If a man has to show off his muscles, et cetera, to get a wife, then they are looking for the wrong kind of woman. Amen. Amen. Um, and then Chris G1029 says, Christian, the same goes for men in their local gym, showing off their muscles and legs. Legs, clothing, yes. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, put a question mark, so I'm assuming that's a question. Yes, that goes the same for men. Um, trust me, I used to be one of those guys that i go up to the mirror and kind of flex, and, and it, it'd make me feel good, you know, if I'm wearing wearing uh, tighter clothing, you know, that's that's exposing some muscles or some, or, you know, maybe some shorter shorts that expose the, the thigh, the, the calves and the thighs and, and all your progress working out. I, now, let me say this right here. It's not the actual action or the actual situation that's wrong. You need to be working out, right? We need to be taking care of our bodies. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, my fiance can tell you I need to be working out a lot. So um, maybe she's still watching. I don't know. But um, but think about this, though, Chris. You're right. If men are so concerned with showing off their muscles and showing off how good they look, that's pride. It's a proud look. What's one of the seven things that God considers an abomination? A proud look. Someone who thinks, oh, I'm high and mighty. And, and maybe we may not be exactly saying that, and how we present ourselves at the gym, but men work out, and women as well. They, they, they show the muscles, they, they flex. But in all honesty, I don't see how that is being a meek and quiet and humble spirit. 
Men can learn the principles just as women can in First Peter chapter three. We may not be wives. We may we may not be in subjection to husbands because we may be the husband, but we can learn through her example. And so when we're fl uh, flexing muscles and and doing all this, and sometimes I joke around and do that, but in all honesty, when we're doing that uh, in a serious look and we're taking pictures and posting them on social media and just exalting ourselves. Uh, it, it looks like we're exalting ourselves above others, and that's not what we're trying to do. That's also a, a great principle of modesty, Chris. I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, Megan says, Christian, since I'm late, you may have addressed this already, but when talking about the cost of clothing, could that also relate to us being good stewards? Absolutely. Um, I, 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 my fiance knows I'm pretty cheap on clothing. I'm not saying I, I'm going to buy the worst quality. I want to buy something good quality, but I, I, I don't have to have the most expensive. And that's not a, that's not a brag or a, oh yeah I'm a I'm a humble person no I, I just don't have to have the most expensive clothing I really don't um, but that is also talking about being good stewards Second Corinthians chapter eight and nine you know many of us uh, like to reference that when we are preparing our minds for the contribution maybe in the the local assembly or the local congregation of the Lord's church but that does pertain to our. Uh, you know, how we spend and how we have liberty with money. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 13 says, For ye brethren have been called unto liberty, only do not use liber liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So that is actually in reference to money, monetary gain as well, helping the needy saints, uh, the, the provinces of Galatia, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, utilizing the money to help our saints, to further the gospel, to spread the gospel, to edify the church, to help the needy, to help the poor. We're supposed to be doing that. And even helping those in the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10. So, Megan, you hit it right on the money right there. It is it is absolutely necessary that we are not spending tons of money on clothing. Okay? I mean, I've been around people and members of the church. I always have to pick on the members of the church because it's sad. But I've heard so many people, they, they spend so much money on clothing and so much money on sunglasses and so much money on shoes and all of these things and I'm like that money could be spent elsewhere it's not wrong to own shoes not wrong to own sunglasses but what I'm saying is they prioritize the spending of their own hard-earned money on all of these things when in reality they can they can do so much good with what they have so Megan says, I just wondered because before I became a Christian, I shamefully used to dress in expensive showy clothing. Now I'm a Christian. I've wondered about the cost of my clothing and being a good steward with my finances. Thank you for answering. So yes, uh, hey, we, I, I've been there too. And so don't don't ever feel like, hey, I, I'm, um, oh, I, I'm just I'm a terrible person or don't don't feel like that. This is why we study the Bible. This is all why we have God's divinely inspired Word that we may grow in the Word that we have those things, uh, everything pertaining to godliness. Uh, I believe that's First Peter chapter one, uh, verse number three, something like that. I could be, don't ever quote me exactly, but um, we have the Bible, we have the Word of God to help us grow in knowledge and in truth, and to worship in spirit and truth. John chapter four, verse number twenty-four. So again, don't ever feel bad about that. We've all like like uh, Sean says. We've all been there. So, um, but now it's time for us to get right. It's time for us to get going. And now's the time to fix. There are some things which are harder to understand, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16. But I pray and I hope that through this, uh, the first part and now the second part of the study on modesty, I pray that this makes more sense to you. I pray that you all have been uh, encouraged and edified by this Bible study again. Um, through my initial study and, and many sermons and good lessons taught by many strong uh, preachers within the church, uh, I've been able to accumulate a lot of information myself, and it has really influenced and has really pricked my mind and pricked my heart. Elizabeth, you're going to make fun of me for this, but it's pricked my heart to really consider a different way of thinking, a different, different actions. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I don't know if any of you watching are currently not members of the church. You may be thinking, what in the world is he talking about becoming a member of the church? Well, when we talk about modesty, when we talk about these moral issues, these are guidelines for Christians. 
this is not necessarily just a recommendation. It's not re necessarily a rec uh, well recommendation, but also there's not necessarily a uh, just just a, a passing thought that uh, these divine authors, these divine forty authors of this entirety of God's Word has given to us. These are things pertaining to godliness that we must adhere by. We must adhere by the doctrine of Christ, because if we do not adhere to the doctrine of Christ, we neither have the Father nor the Son, but if we do, we both have the Father and the Son, 2 John 9. So we need to go to God's Word to correctly and appropriately utilize it so we may become holy, we may become perfect, Colossians 1.28, Matthew 5.48, and that we can become holy, for it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 16. So if you're wondering how to be holy, how to be perfect, you're, you're, uh, well, Christian, you're, you don't look perfect. I'm not talking about how I look. I'm talking about spiritually. Do you want to be made spiritually perfect? I want to ask you this question. Maybe you're watching this. Maybe you have no idea about the church of Christ. Maybe you have no idea about salvation. Well, I'm going to tell you this. There are three important facts that you need to know. Three important facts that the Apostle Paul would write in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. He would write about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So as long as you understand these facts, right, you understand this, the, the narrative, the gospel accounts that have been given to us divinely, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verse 16. When you understand Jesus the Christ, you want to follow Jesus the Christ. Now, I'm not talking about physically walking and following him. Maybe in some situations, sure. But we're talking about follow him spiritually. Follow him with all of your heart. Your heart, your pure heart, a good conscience, a faith that is unfeigned. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. You want to follow with him all your heart. You want to adhere to his commandments. You want to adhere to his teachings. You want to make sure that you become saved. You need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, as Paul would write in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 12. So how do we do that? First, we need to hear the word of God. We need to hear the gospel message. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you need to hear. You need to believe the word. You need to believe those facts that we talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. You need to believe because Jesus even said in John eight twenty four, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. We are in a sinful state before we've been cleansed, but we need to get to, we have to have the knowledge that precedes being cleansed in the blood. We need to have the knowledge. So we need to hear the word, believe the word. We need to repent, right? God calls all men everywhere to repent. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 30. And God desires all men to come to the knowledge of him and obey the gospel. First Timothy chapter uh, two and verse number four. And that includes repentance. Repentance is that turning away. It's that purging out. Is that getting rid of those things which are not in line with his word. They are not, they are holding you back. It may be situations in your life. It may even be friends or even family. Matthew chapter 10. Sadly enough, that's mainly the case with a lot of people I study with. Their, their families hold them back from really following what God has given us. We can't let that we can't let that stop us. We must repent and turn away and follow him, deny ourselves, pick up our crosses and follow him. Mark 8 and verse 34. So that's what repentance is. All those things, all those sins that we read about in scripture, you're going to purge them out. So you hear, you believe, you repent, and then you confess. You confess, excuse me. You confess that Jesus Christ is deity. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Peter made that beautiful confession. In Matthew chapter 16, verse number 16, Jesus said, And who do you believe that I am? And, and Peter replied, That thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, verse number 37, says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, when Paul is writing to those already saved Christians, when they are to confess in their lives, they are confessed orally and through their actions and through their lives, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ is deity. Jesus Christ, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. And ultimately, to, some, to, to, to really bring it all together, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38, when Peter, and Peter said unto them, those who asked him what shall they do to be saved? 
And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Mark 16, 16. Same parallel that Jesus even spoke. Peter, by divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gave those words in Acts 2, 38. But Christ himself said in Mark 16, 16, that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is it he that believes only? No. Is it he that is baptized only? No. But it's a culmination of what we've been discussing, what we've been studying, what we've been looking at in his word. He that believeth and, the conjunction and, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Preacher man, right on the spot, 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure wherein to baptism doth now also save us. Right? It's not a removal of the filth of the flesh. Baptism is not a bath. But it's an answer of a good conscience towards Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Romans 6, 3-5. When we are buried with him in baptism, we are raised to walk in the newness of life. And our sins are washed away. Baptism washes away sin. Not believing only. Not praying to God. Baptism washes away your sins. Why would Paul even tell, or excuse me, Ananias, why would Ananias tell Saul in Acts chapter 22 and verse number 16, and now why tarriest thou? Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. It doesn't get any easier than that. Some things are hard to understand as we talked about. And modesty is one of those things. To, it's, it's, it's a hard, in-depth topic to discuss. Is not some topic that's been passing by. Many people have been told, oh, as long as you don't wear that, you're good. Modesty is so much of a deeper study than that. And so it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor getting to look at this uh, moral issue with you guys. Uh, do you guys have any more questions on it? I'd be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. You can, you can obviously contact us on our Instagram or contact us on Facebook, uh, our YouTube. Uh, go on our YouTube channel and watch our videos. Um, but, uh, I've got some comments here before I get off. Um, I've heard it said, if we do what they did, we'll become what they were. That's a good saying. Yeah. Um, Megan said, I forgot to mention about one for, uh, one and two for us Christian ladies. If you're looking for t-shirts to have scripture on them, there's a store on Etsy by butterfly and design co that designs these. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, what's better than proclaiming the word of God through what you wear? I, I think that's great, Megan. So. Uh, I don't know anything about that. I'm not, I'm not a girl. I'm not trendy at all. I'm not, uh, my fiance can tell you I'm not cute at all with, with clothing. I'm probably the most, uh, uh, I don't know, lamely dressed person you'll ever meet. But, um, that's why I leave it up to the ladies to decide that. But again, guys, it's about time for us to close. I hope you guys have really enjoyed the study. And next week, I believe next week, we're going to get into a topic of drinking alcohol and social drinking that's going to be a hard topic again i've gotten questions on that and so we are ready to go moral issues we got to study why you know, we got to study why we are you know not in favor of these things or maybe are in favor of something we've got to know why uh because many people even with the church don't even know so we've got to study these things guys we've got to look at the god's word and we've got to make sure that we are living faithfully unto death. Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10. All right, guys, about time for me to go, but always remember to be asking that very important question found in Romans chapter 4 and verse number 3. What saith the scripture? Have a good evening, guys.